JU-86R1 high-altitude reconnaissance aircraft. This high-altitude version of the JU-86 has a two-seat pressure cabin and two Yunkers Yumo 207 engines. Span, 105 feet. Wing area, 1,050 square feet. Aspect ratio, 10.5 to 1. Fuel tankage, 220 gallons. Normal flying weight, 17,600 pounds. Speed, 230 miles per hour at 45,000 feet. Service ceiling, 47,200 feet. Range, 620 miles at 45,100 feet. JU-86 R-2 High Altitude Bomber The bomber has increased fuel tankage, 286 gallons, and flying weight, 19,800 pounds. The range with one 500-kilogram bomb is 840 miles at 42,500 feet. JU-88H1 with two BMW 801 TGs and two 003A1s. This project is mentioned in a BMW document. I could not find a single photograph, model, or drawing of this aircraft. Yunkers JUEF-128 This fighter had air intakes at the fuselage sides to divert the boundary layer airflow to a vent outlet after the cockpit fairing. The wings were of wooden construction, swept back 45 degrees, and had two small vertical fins and rudders on the wing trailing edges. 143 gallons of fuel were contained in the wings, and a further 271 gallons were contained in a fuselage tank located just behind the cockpit. A pressurized cockpit was provided with an ejector seat and armor. Power was supplied by a Heinkel Hearth HES 011 jet engine, and two MK 108 30 mm cannon were installed in the sides of the fuselage cone. An additional night fighter, all weather fighter, with a lengthened fuselage and room for a second crew member, was also in the design phase. Span 29 feet 2 inches. Length 21 feet 3 inches. Height 8 feet 8 inches. Wing area, 189 square feet. Empty weight, 5,747 pounds. Takeoff weight, 8,988 pounds. Maximum wing loading, 47 pounds per square foot. Maximum speed at sea level, 562 miles per hour. Rate of climb at sea level, 75 feet per second. Takeoff distance, 2,297 feet. Landing distance, 2,182 feet. Landing speed, 116 miles per hour. Service ceiling, 45,111 feet. Junkers JU-187 The JU-187 kept some of the features of the earlier JU-87 Stuka, such as the cranked gull wing and two-man crew, but added retractable landing gear and a very novel reversible vertical tail. The JU-187 was to be entirely constructed of metal. The wing was tapered and featured both dihedral and anhedral. Slatted dive brakes were fitted near the trailing edge of the landing flaps. The main landing gear was housed in a bulge at the conjunction of the wing, where the angle of the wing changed, and retracted to the rear, also rotating 90 degrees to stay flat under the wings. Power was to be supplied by a Yunkers Yumo 213A 12-cylinder liquid-cooled engine, and developed 1,750 horsepower at takeoff. 
One of the most unusual features was the movable vertical tail fin, which could be moved 180 degrees in flight, thus clearing the field of fire for the rear gunner. Two men sat back to back in a pressurized cockpit. Defensive armament was located in a remote controlled rear turret consisting of one MG-151 20mm cannon and one MG-131 13mm machine gun. The bomb load was one 1,102-pound bomb under the fuselage and two 110-pound bombs under each wing on either side of the landing gear bulges. Span, 59 feet 3 inches. Length, 38 feet 9 inches. Height, 12 feet 9 inches. In a recent video I posted called, What's Wrong with Flying Wings? I seem to have ruffled a few feathers. And I'd just like to say that I don't hate flying wings. After all, the NASA Pathfinder flying wing had propellers made by my good friend Craig Cato, so how could I not like that? In fact, I like any special purpose aircraft. And the Junkers EF-128. I know that scoop is supposed to suck up the boundary layer scrubbing the side of the fuselage, but if I was an air molecule floating around out there, I don't think I would want to go in that little in that little space between the wing root and the fuselage. I think this design could also benefit from some Arnold rule, uh, meaning a, a straight fuselage rather than a round one. And that little crevice in there bothers me. So, the Junkers, 187. I don't know how the rudder goes from down to up, and I haven't really seen any good explanations of how that was supposed to work. And it kind of doesn't look like it would work, looking at the pictures and depictions of the thing that was really never built. So I don't know. See you next time. The present tense has been used for convenience in the following contents. However, this does not mean that an aircraft is in existence or that one was ever built.